assassin clock. Then now what time it is, they go, well, look, the digital numbers. Well, wait a minute. The big hands here, where is it? <laughs> it's a problem. She just Yo. said yes. You all set? Yes, sir. Okay. okay. Sorry. All the meeting in order, approval of the minutes from March 14th. Make a motion to approve the minutes. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any questions, objections, nays? No? Okay, that's good. All right. 240 Kensington Road, otherwise no police station. Um, I thought Brian Hughes was going to join. Brian, are you there? Well, we'll just bypass that. And okay. We'll tell you what, we'll move seven, uh, four down to six or seven. Make it Brian a chance to uh, if, get if, here. Yeah, he said he was going to show. Or make a motion to move uh, item number four down past item seven. Okay. Second. All in favor? Aye. Uh, okay. Okay. Stand here with subject. Okay. Uh, then uh, elementary schools. Patrick, you want to go in or? You want, you want me to start? It? Yeah, we love your updates. There's <laughs> <laughs> so, a lot, lot going on. Yeah, I mean, all state hit pretty hard this week. Um, yeah. All the unit vents are in, their pipe, water's flowing, all the hangers are in, they're wrapping up the insulation at this point. They started the masonry around the, uh, the chiller enclosure. They're probably, when I was there yesterday, probably about 30, 40% done. But that first bit is it, you lay out and everything. So they're doing pretty good progress there. Um, I talked with the Masons for a little bit. They're using an electric mixer. It's four guys going. All the cuts are pretty much done. So we felt that they could continue installing during the day while the kids are back, as long as they stay in the enclosed area. The work they're doing is not noisy at all. Actually, them talking to each other is probably the loudest part. So, um, past experience of other school projects, I think it's going to be just fine. We shouldn't have any issues. Don't see it going much more than uh, past Thursday next week, though, depending on the weather. Um, so, yeah. with where we're at right now, Allstate is also the heat exchangers in, pumps are in. They, they made a lot of headway, and they're actually at the point where Allstate's crew is going to be pulling off site until the chiller arrives in the summer. So right Did now, the chiller is still July or up a little bit. I think it was chiller's June. June. Yeah, it was like early or mid June, I think. Chiller's June. The it's the electrical that we're waiting on. That's going to be July. I just want to get the actual time. Yeah. So in May, there may not be any activity there at all. After next week, there probably will be no activity. From, okay. from them they've just they, they're they've done everything done. in the building yeah um even abs has the building controls contractor has done all their basically all their terminations at this point <laughs> um is it too early to do any tmp uh, uh, yeah it's too early yeah. because you know we need the um sure. the, yeah. yeah you probably could do it without the chiller because it's a separate it's a, a closed system yeah. on the because inside of the building it, but you you're kind of again. Yeah, we wouldn't really be gaining much yeah. right well, now. It's a plate heat exchanger. That's the only reason I was asking. Yeah. Yeah, you, you probably could do it, but um, <laughs> there's benefit. Right? Okay. That's really what it comes down to. You'd be then looking at mobilizing the balancing contract in place. Um, any more, any further word on air quality and the issue with the one lady? Uh, Doug would probably have to speak more to that. Um, from yeah. what I understand, they were monitoring it, and yeah. there weren't any major issues. That, but I don't want to speak out of turn. Yeah, here. I didn't okay. hear anything further on that. Once they, and I don't know what they did actually. Okay. So yeah, they didn't tell us. They did. They did the four. I think it was uh, four days of continuous monitoring, and then I think those results were sent to everybody. And there really wasn't any. Red, there weren't any red flags. It was pretty much whatever. And as part of the, I think the ramp up, um, Mike from ASC had a great idea about running the hot water mm -hmm. through the system while the kids are away because you get any of that smells and all that, which I thought was brilliant. Like get all that stuff kind of worked in. Anything that was plastic, I mean, like any plastic. Well, stuff, it's like the oils that are left over from manufacturing yep. on all the tin too. Yeah. You kind of, the first couple of days you get, you know, oh, new car, get that, that yeah. burn off stuff. Yeah. 
So he just he wants a circle of hot water, which I thought was a great idea, just because when we know that there's back? Monday, right? What? Monday. Monday. Yeah, that's it. Very sure. Back. Monday. So yeah, the chiller expected ship date is June 14th, and the switchboard is expected to ship on July 8th. So really, I mean, they'll, they'll, the system will all be done. They'll be waiting on the switchboard, and then that that'll be a considerable effort putting the switchboard in, and then. Uh, yeah, but the kids won't be around, so that'll be no. That'll be. I have two projects in the same state, waiting for the switchboard, switchboard and waiting for the chiller. Yeah, yeah. it's right? pretty common at this point. Yeah. yeah. Another project, uh, another another chiller project I'm doing is uh, <coughs> well over a year for a chiller at this point. Seventy-two weeks. Seventy-two. Yeah, when you release it. It still hasn't improved either. It's actually gotten worse. Yeah. It's yeah. amazing. You would think it would have gotten better. Yeah. Well, it didn't it get a little better when we first did it. was July, and then it got moved up to June. Now it's... When we, we when Newfield <laughs> put the project schedule together, I think we had it anticipated July. Yeah, you did. Yeah, you and did. then um, their their original ship day, anticipated date, was July matching very close to what we had. And then they got a note from Dakin say, oh, we can expect in April. And then a couple months after that, they said, wait, no, wait, June. Yeah. And that, that June day has been holding for a while now. Okay. So, so, yeah. And that, those dates, you know, with the panel and the chiller, that still gives us plenty of time to have everything running. And there, there's chances we're probably going to still be doing a little bit of commission punch list type stuff, just getting things dialed in certain spaces um, yeah. in September. But yeah. it'll be very, very minimal, if anything. Where's the chiller coming from? Yeah. Oh. I, I don't, I don't know, actually, I don't, this is, um, I know it, it's taken, so they have plants in Canada, but they also have plants in Texas. Okay. I don't know which one it's coming from. I think it's the Texas plant. It's not Malaysia. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, that's good news. I saw um, the pictures. And on the book, on the bookkeeping end, you guys, um, you approved three PCOs at the last meeting. Mm -hmm. Right. We have the zero, and then you would ask for zero dollar change order forms to track. Yeah. So we have two of those here tonight for you to sign, and, and that can be done. Sign, we don't have to act on them. Yeah, just, right. So they're yeah. just really this seven and eight. Yep. Um, the reason we don't have the third one, number nine, is this is one where they had to reroute some of the piping to keep it out of the exterior wall. Um, CES is challenging some of the labor hours they have applied to it. So I'm just waiting for. See you next time. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. That, okay. That's really what it comes down to for that one. Yeah, you guys uh, approved the scope and had an idea of the budget, so it'll probably be coming down, not going up. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So, yeah. so we have these here for you. So I don't know what these numbers would hold, but on the percentage of completion, you guys were around, if I, if I remember these numbers right, 58% based on your contract, and all state was at 60 68 or 59, something like that. Last, there was last about a 10% yeah. gap. Okay. They got a lot more equipment again last last month. Okay. But during the last payout, I, this is, I think we spoke briefly about it. Um, they were looking at billing 100% for all the equipment this this month. So that, that's your heat exchanger, the pumps, uh, all, all the miscellaneous equipment like that. So really now at this point, they have, you're looking at just installing the chiller, right? the electrical panel, then the connections for that. So. That seems to be in the last quarter of the job for sure. Yeah. So it doesn't seem, it didn't seem to me to be out of whack, and I'm happy to hear that they're that far ahead. Yeah. I mean, they're they're ba inside the building in the classrooms and everything. They're done. Yeah. It's basically done. It's got to make the principal. Yeah. Yeah. The yeah they, finished, they finished her office, right? Or, well, no, actually, that office. was something they were. I forget why Mike, their foreman, said, but they were leaving the principal's office for last. I think it was the is principal it, had using it. two units next to each other and he needed, he needed to connect or something? That's what it was. Yeah. The pipes are, um, the way the pipes are, he just has to get a standoff piece to, oh, that's to right, stand build them off the wall, off the wall a little bit more. But the ones that are there now, they're still fully functional. Okay. So the one other thing that I was going to go into the ceiling. Yeah, that's what I was going to. Yeah. So yeah. this is something that was brought up. Um, I forget who initially brought this up, but there's a we had our contractual obligations to replace the ceiling and the corridors that we were touching, and looking at it, 
there's a good chunk of the ceiling remaining, so that's what in, in yellow is what I'm talking about now, of the corridor ceilings that haven't been touched, and it's just basically half the building you have brand new ceilings, the other half you don't. So we were... Will they is it remain old? As of right now, yes. Okay. They did put together pricing for us if you guys okay. would want to entertain replacing the old ceiling in the corridors as part of this um, construction project. They also did provide pricing for the, the classrooms too. This is not something that's needed per se. It's not part of the original scope, but it is something that we have our ceiling contractor as part of all states contract. They can, they can come back and mobilize and do this if this is something you would want to entertain as part of this project. Uh, would, well, we need a new statement of need. We can't just uh, unilaterally. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, and I, we have a, we're under a contract. So, but I'm not, I wouldn't object if somebody came back and, you know, I don't know who Doug would probably have to do that. Yeah. Or the town would have to say, hey, look for this. Here's where we're at. And, and this is, it makes more sense to do this than if we were to go out and do it later on. From a, I guess, Physical standpoint, it's just visual. It's right. just old. So you're putting like the numbers paint. and make sure the schedule's with it. With how long it takes duration wise, right? And then you're, you're absolutely right. Let's get a statement. Yeah, well, I mean, so you know, are they talking just pads or grid too? It would be grid, grid too. too. Yeah. So there would be. Would there be a benefit other than it looks pretty? That would be pretty much it. Yeah. Okay. It, it would be exactly. cohesiveness throughout the building. Want a candid? Well, that's yeah. Just want a candid response. Yeah. It's not like there's. I do have initial pricing if you care to hear it now. Sure. So it's low. As a as as a rough order, it's um. This is the directly from the ceiling contractor, so all state would mark up mark up on it. You're about seventy two thousand if you want to do. Uh, that's on second shift too. If we did this during the summer, there'd be a uh, well, value Patrick, there. If 84. you could uh, manage to swing seventy thousand dollars in savings, <laughs> yeah, <through laughs> juggling on this job, I think we have no brainer. Yeah. But considering what we're what's that? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's worth you know. I'll leave that up to the powers that they. But yeah. it definitely will require yeah. a, a yeah. An adjustment to the state. And, and there is, we talk, uh, and at, when this came up in the meeting, I did say that this group is focused on the project and kind of has blinders on. So anything like this, which you can say, well, it's a great idea, but it's well, not in, out, I know, it. it's, not in the, it's not in the statement of need, which is from town council, then, right. you know, it may not, it may not go anywhere. The other thing is that was raised was the deficiencies that were found, but they, this was in the older part of the school, electrical and all the stuff that was kind of like had to be done under another change order. You risk having that by pulling, once you pull the grid down, yeah, you're gonna have yeah, stuff. Yeah, you do so expose yourself to that. That's, that's a, a double question mark on that, you know, that which. And I guess um, <clears throat> the other thing I wanna say was that from a contingency standpoint, when this goal gets wrapped up, I don't think we use a contingency. Did we? Uh, we used some. 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 Well, we're some. using mainly allowances. Well, we had a, we had we had allowances and contingencies. If there's a savings there, you have a better shot of making the case to the council. Closer to the end of the project. Yeah. Right. So that's right. why it might be premature. Well, it might be. Yeah. yeah, it could be premature. But the fact that we're seventy percent done, and and I'm just going to goose now the fact that we're going to have to chill her in the switching it and there might be some issues sure. with that, yeah. you know. That's most like most probably where you have more issues than anything else. So I'll keep my mouth shut. And, and, the, and the percentage the the percentage that hasn't been touched or would be done is is, is greater than half, fifty percent. I mean Oh yeah. Is, yeah. yeah I mean, so what's this in yellow is, is what, what hasn't been touched. The red hatch is what was part of contract oh, okay. for them. Oh, okay. Now okay. does that price include the mechanicals that need to get taken down and put back up, like the fire alarm, the security cameras, the lights, rehomes? They excluded that. They excluded yeah. that. Yeah. So now you're talking, so now you're talking I know. Well, that, that, like we had last time, remember? Yeah. Right. And what was the cost for Yeah, I mean, if it was like you know, was it ten percent of the electrical efficiency um, change order? 
But I know it was, it was kind of a TNM thing with an upset limit. Yeah, I remember. I, I, yeah. So, well, I mean, if we know the like square footage. Is it like 10 grand or something like that? If we know the square no, footage of what that. we did. They were there for a while. Yeah, we, if we know the square footage of what we did in the class, we come up with a cost per square foot. Right. Oh, we could use so, that as a, right, yeah. Guess, yeah. And I think, as Patrick pointed out, it's in a newer area. Most of it is in newer areas of the building that we weren't working in the, in the old part, in the hallways. But I just don't want to open up a can of worms. Let's say we know it's whatever right. it is, 80 grand. But then we end up with another hundred and right, so, yeah, right, exactly. right. Well, that's right. that's we'll something that you oh, this is all installed oh, wrong. It's not the Zemi quote. They got open juncture uh, boxes everywhere. And yeah, that was the fire uh, marshal comes out, the electrical inspector, and we're like, never know. Hundred and fifty grand. Yeah, that's good. Right. No, it was an extra. It was well, an extra so seven grand. Yeah, yeah, just right? you know, that was say break it into pieces. Twenty-two grand, first floor, second floor, something like that. And this is what happened. Yeah, I mean, also this is the newer side of the building that was built in the late eighties, early nineties, whichever it was. Um, downstairs, we had the ceilings down, down there. That was like pristine. That was pretty cool. So I wouldn't expect many issues um, along that longer corridor. I'd be more concerned about the sh shorter section there. That's in the front of the All right near the right. cafeteria. Yeah. Right. Okay, if you're talking to them, just get a price like, like J Jason said. You know, we're gonna have the speakers, smoke detectors, right? All that kind of stuff. Let's look at what you know. Like without open up the ceiling, you know, go count how many head sprinkler heads there are. Go count how many uh, fire alarm devices. devices yeah. yeah, yeah. Anything that's up there, not cameras, that we got to take out and put back in. Let's try to get. If we're going to present a number. Let's make sure it's. Uh, yeah, we have to. Yeah, it. I was bringing this as conversation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Well, to, to to add to that, I think Don's exactly right. We need to be really okay. accurate. Yeah. This can't be. Mm -hmm. You know, we got to hit that. Broadside of the barn, we we have to hit a little tiny. Understood. Because if we go in, ask for this, and it turns out we're going to need more for stock, we can't go with it. Right. And rightfully so, the town can come with it. Town council come back and go ticked off. What the hell are you doing? Oh, that's totally. I, so we need to know that. For aesthetics. <laughs> What's that? For, for aesthetics. aesthetics. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So we need to iron out every single expense. You know, go. Somebody's got to go through it and think. To your point, does that include this, this, and this? And anybody who goes oops at the end eats it. Yeah. And it's not going to be us. So that would be my suggestion. And see where it goes. Worth okay. the shot. Yeah. And then, okay. yeah, and waiting till the summer, you'd actually say if they would, they would knock off 8,400 for the for the hallways, and then if we do the well, 550 for the stairwell. But um, the car, the classrooms, you uh, they have like about eight or nine grand. I think what was it? Oh, if we did the stairs, it's that's five, and yeah. the classrooms would be another eight per classroom per, per classroom. Right. So that's I the, wouldn't. The yeah, I know. Say, I know. That, that's really kind of. Yeah, you take everything yeah. out of the fire. Oh yeah, the furniture. And, so. Anyway, it was so. Uh, here, it's going to be a, a huge project. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it would be another another <laughs> logistical another, yeah. another summer, <laughs> and you're yeah. getting into custodians' way and everything else again. So. Yeah, that's true. So that's, I guess that's our update. All right. That. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and Tom, you can sign these two COs at the end of the meeting. Let's do it now. Please do. Oh, you have them already? Okay, good. All righty. What I don't have, I have Patrick's uh, invoices, but I don't have anything from Allstate. Unfortunately, at about. Oh, they didn't send it. That's all. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah. They, no, they, that's all I need to... they did. They yeah. did, and it was reviewed by both by everyone. And last minute today, I caught an accounting error on it. They built a line that shouldn't have been built. Okay. And I didn't yeah. get uh, revision in time. Why we hired you? <laughs> <laughs> so there we go. Last work for you, Tom. Yeah. Say two thousand. Not that much. <laughs> More like three. I'm uh. Rather get it right, have them wait and learn a lesson. Yeah. So, thanks for catching it. Yeah, sure. And while you're here, uh, we have invoices to pay, one of which is New Fields, monthly $20,388.50 in invoices. So, I have a motion. I make a motion to pay it. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? Rocco abstains. So, okay, so, we're in good shape. And then, what's the other one we have? Briar, we have a, a, an invoice for you. Don't have to hang around. All right, yeah, you're free right. to go. 
Thanks very much, Patrick. Let me know if anything comes up. Oh, you get, and we you get the rest of the night to yourself. Right. Okay. <laughs> and we we've, uh, we've shifted the meetings to uh, they'll be every month just before this meeting. So uh, because there's nothing going on. Yeah. But Patrick had said, you know, we should at least touch base because there might be some yeah, stuff working. Yeah. So we'll have our formal meetings once a month, the week, the couple of days before. Uh, At the school again, or? Uh, um, it de I think it's going to depend. Okay. Um, yeah. Most likely, the next one for May will probably be virtual. Yeah. Okay. And that'll be where everyone joins. But Mike and I will be talking. I'll be talking with Russell. We'll probably have our own phone calls. Just yeah. Yeah. Impromptu communication. Yeah. Stuff comes up. Just but if they're not on site. There's no, there's there's no point being there. You're yeah. irritating everybody. I totally agree. So. Yep. All right. All right. Okay. Thanks, Thanks Patrick. Patrick. Thank you. Take care. Yeah. Thanks, Patrick. Uh, so the other one was Fryer. We have an invoice for Fryer for 840 bucks, which. I looked at it, by the way. Yeah. yeah. Um, leaves them with. Yes, it makes them 95%, 94.32% complete. So we got another 5% to go. Yep. We probably won't get that until next month. Well, not no, even. There'll, there'll be nothing going on. There'll be nothing going on. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So they shouldn't have next month. It'll be. They might be. It might be. There might be no billing. Right. Next month. For both CES I mean, and Friar. Right. Yeah. And the last bill will be once the chiller is switched. Although they did obtend this meet this past meeting, so there may be another bill. Then there'll be a gap in their billing. For All right. Anyhow, we got an invoice for 840 bucks. So I have a motion. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? No. Good. Okay. Um, yeah. I have a little more on the schools. Oh. Okay. Just real quick. Okay. I got. Um, Quotes from CES and Fryer, I sent those, ar those around to you, and these are really just to tee them up in case we get one of the grants or both of the grants for Griswold and Hubbard, because okay. they're, they're waiting. The, the state is late in, in announcing right. the awards, and if you recall, last cycle, we didn't, the Berlin didn't get anything. Right. Um, so they revamped, they went back, I think they figured out maybe where they could improve the applications, but... We had a second bite at the air, a third bite Yes, the exactly, hour. yeah, so... Um, so, well, they, they issue another round. Did everybody do? Yes. So, we're, again, uh, it's in competition for all, from all, whoever else uh, submitted the application. So, anyway, okay. um, so these are teed up. And in rough numbers, CES is at $32,000 for each school. That that was from the um, basically getting updated the drawing with all the latest codes, the catalog numbers, getting the bid package together, and then all the way through construction administration until the end of the job. So, that's what that, that's come from. Okay, we, you say go, it goes to the end to close out. And the same with Fryer, they have um, 50590 for each school. Theirs is hired because they actually have to do some design work. CES is pretty much all done. They get a kind of just kind of wrap up loose ends. Fryer has to do the exterior chiller stuff, the outside trenching. Um, PNZ, I heard from PNZ they want some screening. So um, there'll be some landscape sort of stuff around that we didn't have to do at Willard. Mm -hmm. So that'll be in there too. At both schools? They yes. Yeah. So it's 50000 each for Fryer. So you're looking at like eighty two, eighty three thousand dollars $83,000 for those two firms. Once we hear we won. If we don't win, then it just, they're teed up, ready to go, depending on when the fund, how the funding is uh, identified by the town council or board of finance. So, okay. Anyway, so they're there. Um, I sent them around. If you have any comments, let when, me know. Uh, when do we expect somebody to? Um, Any expected soon because they were supposed to come out. I think between mid March and late March with the awards. Right now we're almost in mid April, so they're probably a month late. And I think the, it happened last time as well. They pushed out, so they're you know they had I think a, a, a completion goal at the end of 2025. Since they're late, we expect that their schedule will get more realistic Any as far as doing the projects. Whispers from Donna. I have heard nothing. Whether she knows yeah. anything. No, or I, I anything. haven't talked okay, to her about no this. Deal. Yeah. It is what so. it is, as the saying goes. So. Yeah. Okay. So, and then one other item. We got the revised boiler evaluations for Griswold, Hubbard, and Willard. They incorporated comments from you folks on, and it basically, 
was related to, we asked them, and this was Salomone and Associates, we asked them about um, providing more of a cost-benefit analysis for the condensing boilers, um, compat compatibility with the existing systems in the schools, maintenance and longevity concerns, you know, because I guess the standard cast iron boilers are, I guess, bulletproof. The condensing boilers I hear are more maintenance intensive, shorter life and all that. And, um, and then how that relates to the newer cast iron boilers, they're more efficient, but are they still, you know, lagging behind condensing boilers? The answer is yes, you know, whichever one knows. And then specs and performance data. So they added that information in section five, which is two pages, and it looks like they addressed it, but I sent the reports around. If you want to go right to section five and look at the last two pages, you can take a look, but it looks like they added in information that addressed some of the comments. So we haven't gotten a bill from them, and I think they're expecting just, you know, is this acceptable before they bill us? So that's kind of where things stand. Acceptable in terms of is it uh, thorough or if not? if the comments that if the additional information right, that they provided yeah. addresses okay. you had some comments yep. I think yep. a few others had comments so okay um, and basically they say condensing boilers they show it yeah. dollars yeah. you know efficiency yeah. and you're not eligible for some rebates um, depending on the size of the boilers with the cast the existing boilers or the newer cast iron boiler so anyway that's that that's another little item just to take a look at and we can close that thing out. And I think that's needed because if you go for a federal grant for the school's heating and cooling systems, um, the, the, if what? there were no grants, right? If there were no incentives, which would they recommend? I think they still would go with the condensing boilers. As opposed to my old customer who said run away. But yeah. Well. That's the decision. That's everybody's yeah. opinion. I yeah. mean, you know, Doug and the facilities guys can chime in and say, hey, yeah. these things are bulletproof. And yeah. the newer ones, you know, maybe the high school has, does the high school have the condenser boilers in them? Or a whole, whole different system? This no, I, I, I digress. I digress. But anyway, you know. But no, I, think no, I, I take your point. Everybody's got an opinion. Yeah. So. so if you could just, like, take a look at the last, the last two pages of Section 5, and then let me know, you know, it could be before – the next meeting, we can have a bill in, or if you want more work, we can just send them. If you have any more comments, let them know. Um, okay. And that's the end of that. Okay. Well, Brian has joined us, so we'll, uh, yeah. we'll go with the expansion and renovation at 240 Kensington Thank you. Road. What's that? You said hello, but he's muted. Oh, muted. Brian, you're muted. Good go. evening. There you go. How's the, how's the audio? I can see you. Can you hear me? Yep. Yes, loud and clear. All right, good. Um, well, I'll give you an update on 240 Kensington Road. The project working with Millennium and working with Adam has been going very well. They're, they're hitting their schedule. They have the slab poured in the areas of the Sally Port or wherever there was slab removal. All that's been backfilled. The underground plumbing's complete. The exterior grease oil water separator is complete and plumbed. Uh, so what they're doing now is metal stud. And the metal stud installation is pretty much completed. They're leaving some openings just so they can get some large equipment in. And that allows the MEP contractors to get in there and start to rough the MEP trades within the walls. But the layout has gone seamless. There's really has not been a lot to discuss as far as contract scope. And I have no change orders tonight to present. Now, saying that, there are some items that we have in discussion. And the items that we have in discussion will impact project dollars going forward. Um, one of them is the waterproofing solution at the range wall. And as you realize, the range wall is under the plaza in the front of the building. So a big triangular section of the lower level storage is under the plaza where you enter the building. Up. And, and so it's exposed to the planters and the exterior conditions above. We have asked Millennium 
to recommend and get a waterproofing contractor to work with us to develop a negative side waterproofing solution, drain replacements in the plaza, seal cracking in the plaza to try to seal the cracks that are, are visible, and also some conduits to get removed uh, so we can seal some conduits that are not being utilized but are bringing some water inside. Now, when I say bringing water inside, it's not that it's really flooding the condition. We're getting a little bit of drippage, a little bit of seepage. It's not due to a noticeable crack in the wall, but it's due to joints and seams where the walls seem to have through wall ties that weren't sealed or wall versus metal deck joints that are, are visible. I think the best we can find is a negative side waterproofing solution for now, knowing that the town may have a bigger project on their hands by doing something with the plaza you know, down the road. And Doug is, has indicated that that is a future project for the town sometime to address it from the top down. And it's, it's, not, it's not in terrible shape. And most of the heavy water is coming in through the conduits that are not being used. That's the most water we see. The other is just seepage and, and uh, small small drainage uh, that's getting into the lower level. So I have asked for a meeting next Monday or Tuesday. They've identified a waterproofing contractor out of Amstead, Connecticut. We're trying to get a meeting next Monday or Tuesday on site. And if you want me to invite Doug, I can get him involved in that also. So we can all come up with a solution because this it's gonna take some discussion because the entire range wall is not being affected. Certain sections of the range wall are showing signs of leakage. So we could take an approach to just address the wall areas that are showing signs of leakage or address the entire wall to, to block out any future uh, leaks. So those are the decisions that I, I think the town's going to have to be involved with also to say, how far do we go or how far do you want us to go? So in terms of the negative side approach, I mean, are we just talking coatings and grouting on the inside? Yes. Yes. Would there be an opportunity to full penetration drill and polyurethane or whatever, expanding foam through the hole on the outside? in at least select areas, I, I understand it may not be advantageous for an entire wall, but if we're talking discrete locations, that may be a reasonable approach for spot locations. And I think that's why we're calling in an expert on this with the waterproofing contractor. They have the tools available to do yep. any of these and all of these. They do injection uh, yep. waterproofing, they do negative side, they'll even do positive side, but we're not going to go out there and rip the plaza apart just yeah, to get no, no, to... understand. That's why, yeah, I mean, with what you're presenting being mostly penetrations and spot locations, it just, yeah. at least with some of the things that I've seen, it seems that some of the injection stuff, you know, can does work pretty well for those, um, you know, as long as you're not trying to necessarily, I'm going to call it, uh, grid out the whole wall and try to deal with the whole wall from the inside. If that's the case, you might as well probably just attack from the outside, so to speak. But yeah, no, I was in, uh, that sounds good. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Ryan, is there a chance that you're going to have to do, or not you, but contractor or whoever they hire, going to have to do some uh, exploratory surgery, as it were, out there to, to make sure that they know what they're dealing with, or are they going to use their best educated guess? We have enough information to take not more than an educated guess because we have drawings of what's out there. We have okay. on top of the plaza deck, we have a concrete deck, we have an insulation layer, we have a waterproofing layer, and then we have a secondary concrete deck on top of that, which was being utilized to support pavers. The pavers have been removed and the town has gone back at some time with asphalt instead of the pavers. But we know under the asphalt, there's two layers of concrete deck plus a waterproofing layer that's under there. And where we're getting water, the asphalt that they replaced it with, the asphalt is showing signs of cracking all over. So 
we could find a crack in one location, which is sending water migrating in all different directions. And it's going to be very hard to pinpoint yep. that. So that's why we're going to take a negative side approach until such time as you replace the asphalt. We can take this negative side approach because we're never going to be able to pinpoint where those cracks are creating the water. We can we can easily identify the conduits. That's easy. We can easily identify the drains and because you can see it from below. That's easy. It's the seeping through the wall, which from a from a positive side, you're never gonna find it. You're just never gonna know where it is. So it sounds like you answered my question with there's a correlation between the surface and inside where leakage is. It's probably coming from cracks in the pavement as opposed I believe so. to along walls or something like that. Yeah, and you have planters up there too. So the planters might contribute to that. Right. And then the second question is, when you eliminate the conduits for penetration, you're going to get rid of the conduits or you're just going to seal up? We're going to completely remove the conduits. They were there for electrical. And Doug says they've never been used and he has no intention of using them. And they're rusted. I was I was yeah. down there today, yeah. and just get them out of there. You know, yeah, they're, just, they're falling apart. And they're with respect they're to completely your, rusted through now. Yeah, and with respect to your injection thing, I think up by where the decking and the top of the slab are, that's where you're getting some of the stuff coming in. But I think there's also some efflorescence behind. Oh yeah, it may some still, of, some may of the, still require yeah. a general yeah, overall but coating. I, either way, we're going to crack seal the plaza. Yeah. And, and I don't know if the, we can talk to the waterproofing contractor. We have a crack sealing that's more for roads. Sure. You know, but I, I like the idea of the waterproofing contractor actually doing that because they know what's going on. And, you yeah. know, it's really not like a road. Well, so what's, well, what's going to happen? coming in, Brian? What's that question again? When When is the waterproofing contractor coming? Uh, I've asked Monday or Tuesday. We haven't confirmed yet for time and date, but we're hoping early next week, and then they'll be able they'll be able to see it. We'll have a conversation about it. They'll put a proposal together. It's not holding up the construction downstairs. They got plenty of work to do because before they're closing up any walls. So we have we have some time to to evaluate this, get a proposal, get it in front of you, give you time to uh, react to it, and get the work done. Yeah, and Adam said, because I was looking at the uh, steel studding along the wall, he goes, we can just pop out a couple of studs to give someone room to go in there. And everything else, it's really, they have no roughing, you know, no electrical, no plumbing running through the walls yet. I think when that starts happening, then you're going to get blocked, you know. And he can probably work his way uh, in other areas, but if, once you start putting electrical stuff through those steel studs, yeah. you don't want to move them, you know. Yeah. So no, I, don't, I, don't, I think I that's, that's where, yeah. exactly, so I think we got to, you know. Um, get rolling in with a contract and get him in there. And let him go. Okay. So that that's number one. Uh, number two is the integrated technology systems within the police department. Uh, because this is, and I don't know if everybody or anybody saw my email. Doug had asked me to put together a summary email on okay. what was what was being proposed, because this is not just a PD system, access control is a town-wide system. So we're trying to integrate what the town has interest in and what the PD has interest in. And I can break it down into two categories. One is CCTV, CCTV surveillance and audio. <clears throat> that is currently being recorded through a software system called Milestone that's located in the police department and it's overseen by utility communications. They service that equipment, that milestone. In order for us to add new devices, and we have about 12 new cameras that we have in the renovation portion, in order to add 12 new cameras to this head-end software, they need to expand the video digital storage capacity within that system. That's something that our contractor doesn't have within their scope. Our contractor, Millennium, has adding the 12 cameras, running it back to the communication equipment room. And then the town, at the time it was gonna be utility communications, would come in, add some more storage, 
and program those cameras. Because it's an existing system, we don't want our contractor touching their equipment. So as luck would have it, I get an email on Easter weekend that the milestone system has failed to operate. It, it's just end of life, not working, and its milestone system has failed. Utility Communications has come in and tried to revive it, and they said it's at end of life. So what the police department has done is they would like to switch vendors from utility communications to NORCOM. NORCOM currently services their, their communications equipment, their console, and their radio system, their radio equipment. They would like to get rid of utility communications. They'd like to get rid of the milestone software, and they would like to convert their head-end equipment to what's called a Visualon software. So because over Easter weekend, the system failed, NORCOM has come in and provided a, a visual on system on a, on a loan basis to keep them going. So they've installed some equipment on loan to, to, and tied their existing cameras into it. So they are operating now on this loaner, loaner equipment. When you they say have, they, the police department installed on their own? The police department has reached out to NORCOM for this on their own to get this loaner equipment in. But they've also, NORCOM has given them a proposal for $56,000 to come in and give them the new equipment and to provide the additional digital storage for our additional 12 cameras. And that would give our contractor something to wire back to. NORCOM would then plug it into their system. NORCOM would program those new cameras and they would have additional storage to, to record those cameras. So that's a cost that's being put forth, but I don't know who's supposed to pay for what. And it's fifty-six thousand uh, dollars. I read this, and what? I I I I understand exactly. I should say exactly, but I get the concept very well. Just like Latin was, a, it's a good summary. My feeling is that we can't do anything. It's not a change order. It's in addition to we need a an amendment or a new statement of need, and that Doug, I don't know who would present it. But I don't know that the police department is going to be versed enough to explain it. So I think you and Doug, together with the police department, has to go in front of the town because it seems to me that this is a, or will be, a almost a security issue if this thing doesn't work. And it ought to be fixed correctly, absolutely. Um, and well, we, we, get, we know, did know. We I did know. Think, data for the storage part could be considered ours it's the it, yeah, but, but it, that's no good no 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 i understand you no no i'm saying but the, i'm saying that the the storage part could be considered part of this project yeah, no, because you would have needed things. that regardless right the fact that the this whole, other, the whole right. 56 yeah look at it yeah i guess look, look at it backwards you know uh what's the total cost of the system brian Fifty-six thousand. Fifty-six. 56 does that include the new piece that we need for our are yes. Part of it? Yes. Okay. So, how much money are we carrying in our budget currently for our piece of that? Well, I did. We knew that this was going to be a, a cost because we knew that we couldn't go in and touch yeah. existing yeah. equipment. So, we did put money in the soft cost budget for the owner's vendor to go in there and do some additional work and provide some additional storage. I don't offhand. I think the money portion might have been twenty thousand dollars in the soft cost line. Um, there was money that we put in soft cost to handle this. But the the hardware for the for this this work was carried in our our contractor's bid, correct? For what we needed the, to do? The new devices are in Millennium Scope, yes. Yes. Okay. But not the store. Yeah. And, not and, the and store. In, the in the interconnection to the the system was included in Millennium Scope, correct? Right. Only wiring back. 
wiring, just the wiring, wiring and then wiring. Back, yeah. to it, back to it. But not, I don't think, and I think Brian can explain. I, from my so understanding, I think, it was so. So my my, the, my position on B, if it's fifty six thousand, we carried in our budget twenty twenty. Let's call it twenty five thousand toward it. So the the police station has to come up with the delta. The town this does. Seems to me, and the more I thought about it, more I was reading this. I'm going worse than Kevin. Because the town can come up with thirty thousand dollars to make up the difference. Because it's really a town. Well, they would have to. Yeah. 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 No, I know, but absent, absent, I mean, absent of this project, of absent yeah. of this project, and you know, it's well, Easter, it, and if they, they failed it, after this exactly. project was done, they'd have to come up. Well, they it failed right. before we started. And I, I yeah. think what Doug has done, and Doug could chime in after Brian sent his uh, note around, he sent it to IT and I think also to PD, saying basically what you're saying is we might have to apportion the cost. And yeah. Doug, you can add in. I saw your email, and I kind of glanced at what I, but the, I think the message is. Hey, this is happening. You know, we got to figure out the dollars and cents. We almost have no choice. Us. Yeah. I mean, realistically, unless you want to go back to the days of. I just think it. I think it's straightforward. We carry like like uh, Brian said. We carried money in our budget. We knew we were going to have a piece of it that we would own. So let's tell the town. Here's the piece. We'll right. we'll throw toward it, and then town has to come up with the delta. Yeah, right. So. I mean, if we were farther along in the project, and you know, this is not a, an aesthetics type issue. No. If we were, you know, in the last. You know, last it's stretch not, of the yeah. project. It's not be a different conversation. Right. It's not it's not different. Different. Yeah. So really, I think that, I mean, to your point, you got to I mean, talk to Kevin and Roche and say, hey, look, I don't know that the town has provisions for doing something like this. This is not ordinary, but it certainly is, um, you know, in terms of. This issue wasn't critical. caused by our project. It's like, right, right. It's like not a, right. That's exactly right. Yeah. It's, it's it's yeah. There's got to be some some provision to say, hey, stuff happens. We got to fix this. And so we're, we're going to throw money toward it. Yeah. Whatever we carry, then we'll give it to them. So I'll confirm yeah. with Brian. Brian, we'll confirm the, the dollars and cents. Dollars, right. Dollars that's allocated to this, so at least the town knows. Oh, it's fifteen or eighteen or twenty or twenty-five, whatever the number is, and then they got to come up with a plan for the rest or revise the statement of need and include it. But I think it's easier just to pay the 30 or whatever uh, from the town side because it's yeah, probably timely too. Probably huh? yeah, to we, we were we were fully expecting to touch it, and we were fully expanding to require it to be expanded. So we were covering costs for that, but we didn't expect yes. the whole thing to die. Right, <laughs> <laughs> Brian, come on! No, you know. <laughs> Somebody looked at it sideways. All right, so so that we can so move that's, forward. What, that's CCT and audio. Now, there's also another component for access control. Access control is a townwide system. Access control goes to a Genetech system, and that Genetech system exists within the town hall. And we are wiring our access control, new access control devices to a location so we can wire them to the Genetech system and then programming for that integration of that would be by the town's vendor for the Genetech system. So I think we're all set. I think we're good with that. And that way, if you get a FOB reader uh, and, and Doug needs one FOB to get into all the buildings in town, it's just how they're programmed. Uh, certain people have certain security levels on their, their access control. So access control, think of it as another subsystem, but just going to a different location than the closed circuit TV and, and audio. All right. Well, again, I'll go back to so that we can get this off the dime. I think uh, you, mm -hmm. Doug, and you get with a Roche and say, well, here's, a deal. Here's, the, here's Brian's memo, which, which capsule, encapsulates it very well, and say, look, where do we go? Maybe even get Kevin involved right there. He may pull 30 out of the hat. And there's got to be, for both those systems, there's got to be a long-term service contract yes. that the town's going to have to have on both of them anyways. Right. So I don't think it should be part of this project, that long-term contract. Yeah, that should be in the capital budget. There is none. <laughs> what? Uh, no, it, right. it's, 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 it's funded. <laughs> I don't want to get into it, but it's funded by surplus. It's funded got reverse it. engineering. Got it. Reverse financing. All capital was cut. Sound like you work for the United States government. <laughs> <laughs> Not one dollar of capital in this budget. It's cut. Zero. Nothing. When, when did that happen? 
Uh, let's see, uh, which meeting? <laughs> Board of Finance, Town Council, Board of Finance, whatever. Board of Finance, yeah. And the other thing, we're looking ahead to some furniture needs. Uh, and one of those furniture needs was the evidence storage solutions for evidence storage rooms. We have two rooms designated for evidence storage. I think we talked last time about putting in some high density shelving in one room, putting in some firearms shelving in another room. We did some further research with the town, with the police department. I sat with Detective McMahon, went through his evidence storage solutions, and we are now recommending that there's no need for high density shelving. So the cost of that has been eliminated from the project. I've now gone to just static shelving and I should have a proposal within the week of what's the new cost of just static shelving. But we, the amount of storage that they need there is, is less than the demand for a high density shelving system. So we're well within our furniture budget now. And if you're looking at the rest of the project, as far as renovation scope, there's not a lot of areas that need furniture. It's locker rooms, it's a sally port, it's a gym area. Uh, there's an interview room and there's this evidence storage room. So I think we're well within our budget for, for furniture, seeing that we don't need any high density shelving anymore. So Who were you carrying, ff and &E or os and &E? There was an ff and &E soft cost line. Okay. And we're, we're not gonna be over that number. And, and another, we had an allowance. Yeah. yeah. We had another allowance in there for a wall graphic of $6,000. We work with the PD. They've, they've seen various graphics that we've proposed to them for this wall mural. Uh, they've approved one of the solutions that we presented to them. And so we forwarded that on to Millennium. They're getting a final price on that, but it should be within our allowance amount. But we'll we'll confirm that and, and verify that uh, shortly. And other than that, you know, the project's going along well. Is that you that was going to do it? You look like a painter. No, I thought we were all going to stand there. Yeah, yeah, back. Back. Yeah, yeah. I, I walked a job with, with Mike uh, last week, and it, it looked really good. Yeah. It's coming along in good shape. Yeah. Uh, just one uh, one other item, Brian. You, you recall that the building inspector uh, wanted, had a concern about um, where the steel beams come together when you come in into the work area on the left-hand side where there's like that leakage area. He was concerned about structural because it looks like there's scaling on the beams and maybe some section loss. So um, we have to respond to that in some way because he yep. sent an email to everybody. Will do. I, don't, I see that there's some... Uh... There is some scaling on that. I don't see any structural issues, but we'll address it. Okay. I, I looked at it pretty close. There's a lot of rust there, but I'm not a structural guy. It, it looks nasty. <laughs> and it's on the beams, not, not just the deck. Or so we get bored <laughs> on it. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, just a, just a reminder, we got to close that out in some way. All right. Will do. Okay. I think that's it. Uh, invoices. So we have an invoice from, unless anybody else has any questions on that. We're all done. Uh, $4,270 from Shukunski Fields. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? No? Okay. That's good. And then we also have a, uh, an application for payment from middle. Well, Millennium Builders for $98,040, reviewed and signed off by Brian. Approve it. Make a motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. Everybody opposed? Okay. Brian, whatever shows around 8 o'clock, you're free to go watch. You don't want to talk about the community center, senior center, why you have not you don't need it. I don't think there's anything to talk about. I can summarize it with one sentence, unless Brian <laughs> wants to go on. Well, I have put a date on a calendar for June 4th to present to the council. Uh, Mike, I was asked to, just tonight if I could move that up to an April 20 something date. And I told, uh, and that came from Arosh, I think. 
asking oh, okay. if I could do something in late April, and I and I responded, no, that's a little premature. Oh, okay, I didn't know that. Understood. June fourth, so it is. There's there was a joint meeting tonight of the Park and Rec Commission and the Commission on Aging, and they just sent me a text that it was unanimously approved through their committees, our needs assessment. Congratulations. So from be. that point, I still have some work to go to, to complete our scope moving forward, but we do have those two commissions on board. Got it. Okay. That's my update. All right. Okay. You still thank got you. time for the eight o'clock shows. All right, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Brian. Thank you. Thank you. See you. Bye. Um do we need oh yeah, we six. Do. So now we'll go to six. High school slab moisture review. I saw your email. And uh so it looks like they asked for our advice, which we gave to them and they are Going with their own advice. So, what do we have to do? Anything? Or well, I think we wait for the the second consultant's proposal to come okay. in, and we had a meeting. Doug, Don, and and the consultant and myself uh, went through the high school, looked, took a look, and actually, I I learned a lot going through the high school because I didn't realize where some of these these discolorations were, and some are in the middle of a tile, not along the seams, which is kind of you know. That's what I thought. Right yeah. The edges. No. Yeah, and it's. Um, not a lot are loose though. That's no. you know, so it's they're not blistering. It's like a weird thing. They're yeah. not blistering at all. They're nothing aesthetic. They're, yeah, it's, yeah. They're discolored. Yeah, and in some cases they're actually linear. Like you can, they're following something or they're cracked. There's or some sort of yeah. yeah pattern. In other cases it's like all over the place. So it's a mixed bag. Anyway, yeah, the item got tabled. The Lorero proposal. Uh, Doug had pre prepared a uh, an agenda item. It got tabled, so it was all on the agenda, and uh, just got some kind of like uh, back channel feedback that you know, we're uncomfortable going ahead with it. Or for now, Tom, for now. It wasn't, it wasn't, I, I, that's why I was confusing. Yeah. They could have had a discussion, they tabled it after the discussion yeah. where everybody was aware of the issues. Of the concern. Now, so, well, nobody well, knows why you get tabled. There'll be a discussion when okay. we get the next, next proposal, and then yeah. you, I then mean, because we'll see what, uh, what uh, your decision is on that. Okay. So, and I think it's going to take a while. It sounded like Don that that guy had to go back to his lab, uh, uh, yeah. folks. And next, I think uh, next week he's supposed to get us the proposal. Oh, okay, good. I think I think that's what. Yeah. Understood. Well, anytime before the next meeting is good, then we, you guys yeah. can act on it. And then we can just do the <laughs> see if that flies. I want to understand what it is more than anyone. Yeah. You know, I think it's a combination of multiple issues. Yeah. Yeah. I just don't think it's one. Yeah. Yeah. Do, After well, walking, I didn't realize like you said I thought it was different. Yeah, you know, I thought it was along the edges. I thought it was, you know, yeah. pretty clear cut sign of moisture infiltration. Yeah, it's not that clear. Not all, not not throughout, but in some areas you do see the metal door, the, the yeah, you know, yeah. the door jams are actually, uh, you know, the base of and the so door. The one quarter smells a little musty. Yeah, like there's a mold issue. So, yeah, I mean, it's going to be a bag, I think, of yeah. stuff. It's not going to be one one yeah. one smoking gun. It'll be multiple. And from what I understand, this this consultant, he's not going to core all the way through. He's just going to core in, and they're they're looking at that upper interface, the tile, the adhesive, whatever prep was done, and then the upper part of the slab. Spectrographic but analysis. Is what's what's called? It called? Spectrographic. Spectrographic analysis. So is this looking at the grain structure? <laughs> <laughs> he's, looking at the, he's, taking, he's taking the glue. Chemical. They're, they're breaking everything apart. Yeah. Spectrographic. So more like. Uh, a crime scene than anything else, I guess. But it is a crime scene. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah it's like a dentist going. Yeah. I think you might have a root canal, but I'm not going to drill too deep all the way in case through. I irritate. Yeah. So I'll fill on top of what might be. But that's yeah. Yeah, neither no. there. Next. So that's where it so, stands. So okay, we know where we're at. We're yeah. at um, science upgrades. Yes, I sent your um, very well done research paper to Roche. Um, town manager. Well, I just when saw you a went... Seinfeld episode and they complimented Seinfeld that <laughs> Kramer did and Kramer went, I know. <laughs> <laughs> so you can repeat that, you know, yeah. You know, when you went to the yeah, uh, yeah. The, the state uh, right. guru on this and he gave us all kind. he gave us he gave Castle us Booze, he yeah. gave us the guy in town. Well, he gave us a whole bunch of yes, stuff. Yes, right. Me. So 
what I didn't do is direct or ask a Roche or the t mayor or town council to do anything. So I guess what I'm looking for is they now have multiple ways for someone to go and research. Well, I was very happy to hear that the lady at the Berlin Board of Ed had put together something, right. and she was pretty thorough. Yes. That, I have to say, I did not expect that, and it was very good. Yeah. So my suggestion would be, whoever's working on this at that level, calls that lady up and says, come on in here, you know what you're talking about, because she's the one I think who could direct and maybe negotiate with the people in the school to figure out what kind of curriculum they have so that they know which direction to go in. Okay, because I, I, I didn't know if, if the Pit Polybuilding Commission was going to recommend a consultant, engage a consult, or do we just, the, the, the Public Building Commission want to go back to the Board of Ed and say, hey, this is all the information we have. It's really driven by curriculum. You guys got to really come back. And you have somebody, topic. by yeah. the way, who's smarter than a bag of hammers right. who, who can work on this. And we'll help that person get a, um, you know, I mean, well, whatever the basis need, of design can, in a way. You know? Yeah, well, well, she's the one. She she made all the good points yeah. that this guy said you should be making. She, so she's aware of it. But now I don't know if the if the principal and McGee even knows what the hell she was talking about. That's what I don't. I, you know, yeah, I don't. Know. When we were doing the walkthrough, Mike, myself, and Doug, you know, we went through uh, a couple of the labs uh, right. in the high school, and you know they're holding up pretty well. And yeah, and they look really good. Yeah. Hey, even the McGee labs yeah. look pretty good. Like they I do. said, half the cabinetry there is brand new. They don't yeah. use them. But the yeah. one in the high school looks a little bit like it's McGee. Yeah, yeah. And that's new. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, well, I, you know what's funny? I hadn't been in a new lab, and the little V-shaped desks that are the sprinkle, or like their workstation sprinkle, it was pretty cool. You know, I, I was like, compared to, you know, you had counters all over and maybe a big one in the middle. With Bunsen and Berta's, you know. But if yeah. you get on the state's website and look at that 142-page report that the guy I talked to author, you can see actual classrooms in throughout the state of Connecticut designed for the curriculums of Weston, Wilton, uh, blah, 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 blah. what's the poem by Danbury, Bethlehem, you know, schools oh, Bethel. like that. Bethel, yeah. right? Um, and depending on whether they're in middle school or high school. There was one school there, even an elementary school, that had some sort of laboratory. Stuff. So they're all different. And the one at the high school, I mean, maybe the high school has an advanced one that you don't need in the middle school. I don't know. All yeah. I know is if we rip that shit out, that's got to go in somebody's building. It's nicer than what the police station has. Okay. So do you want me to just I think the thing to do would be to take that and, and talk to a Roche and, and find that lady's name. It's in there. It's in I there think somewhere. it's Kate Matson or yeah, something Kate, like that. Kate something. And say, so contact her, explain what we were saying about how you've got to, you know, how right. further you've got to go. All right. And we'll help her get some, you know, if we need to, if they did make a determination that they want to hire a consultant, we'll certainly participate in that. Okay. Part. All right. Um, Sounds good. Or, or even have her talk to the guy at the state because they'd be talking way more. Right. And I understood what he said, but that was the extent of it. She may be able to talk turkey with him. Right. All right. So I'll run it through a roach first and then go um, to the board of that and maybe go right to her and just say, this is what the building commission really thinks. Right. There might be more research to do before you, you guys understand what's needed as far as a construction project goes. Yeah. Because we'll, we could do it. I mean, yeah. we're all fully capable. But then we go and present it to the principal right. and the dean. He might go, that's not what It should be school about. driven. Right. They should drive. And then we'll get the best rights based on what they tell us. Okie dokie. Uh, new business. Any new business? Monkey business? Old business? Close out status of the high school where we could get a million acres to have to close the free thing out. Take care of the police station and a couple of other things. Okay. <laughs> and and I shouldn't be so harsh because the Board of Finance says you have you usually have money left over at the end of the year. You use it as surplus. The problem with that is it holds up things like if you want to pay, for example. Well, I don't want to get into it, but you have to wait till that, the end of the fiscal year. And for certain projects that are weather dependent and, and lining up contractors, it doesn't really work that well with everything. But we told to go to so they, they, they're not anti-capital. They just fund it with a surplus versus 
getting the taxpayers to do it and then having a surplus. And I, I get their point. Reverse fine. That's anti-capital budget. Um, if you want to I see their point. You'd get your ass kicked right out. <laughs> I make a motion, wager. Okay. <laughs> Second. All in favor. Aye. 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 Aye.